What's going on, you beautiful people? I am the realest Rob. I am a freshman journalism major at Howard University. Hey y'all, my name is Ola Zabaru, a freshman political science major at Howard University from PG County, Maryland. Hi, my name is Madison Robinson. I'm a sophomore English major at Howard University from Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, I'm Elise Martin and I'm a media and journalism film major from Atlanta, Georgia. And I am your host. My name is Brianna Alvarado. I'm a media film and journalism major from Orlando, Florida by way of Long Island, New York. And together, we are, we are, we are unpacked, unpacked and, and unscripted. Hello, y'all. Welcome to Unpacked and Unscripted. I'm your host, Brianna Alvarado. And today we are going to be discussing the 2020 election and yeah, uh, a lot of the chaos. Um, a lot of people have been feeling like um, we've been subject to a lot of misinformation, unfortunately. So to clarify some things, here are the facts before we jump into our discussion. Um, regarding voter fraud, the day after the election, November 4th, an article titled Voter Fraud in Wisconsin, Massive Dump of Over 100,000 Ballots for Biden all of a sudden appeared overnight. Um, it was published by thegatewaypundit.com and written by Joe Hoff, who is a heavily right-leaning um, author who, I kid you not, even promoted his new book in his, in his summary on the publication's website. Um, he called out voter fraud over absentee ballots that were counted in Wisconsin and mysteriously all went to the Democratic candidate, former Vice President Joe Biden. He said, last night, President Trump had a sizable lead in Wisconsin, but this morning, Sleepy Joe somehow took the lead, Hoff wrote in his opinion piece. And on the same day, uh, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel published an article written by reporter and data specialist, Eric Litke, I apologize for mispronouncing that, um, and health and science reporter for the USA Today Network Wisconsin, um, Madeline Heim. And they spoke directly with the director of elections in Milwaukee County, who also said, we are not finding ballots, Julietta Henry, director of elections from Milwaukee County mentioned, and um, ballots are being counted. The increase in the chart simply shows when the city of Milwaukee reported its absentee ballot results. So this was all centered around a graph that was posted um, by 538. And it showed a little spike in um, the Democratic um, vote results that a lot of Republicans found suspicious. So, you know, I think it's important for us to note that it is difficult um, to not fall under this way of misinformation during this really crucial election. So um, with all this, Trump saying to stop counting the votes, accusations of voter fraud and confirmed by many news outlets that he has been spreading misinformation. Does that work to undermine a democracy? Do you think so? If not, explain why. If you do, also explain. I definitely think he's trying to undermine uh, the democracy right now because as a bipartisan system, you have to understand, even if you're not winning, you're not the, you don't have the right to call, okay, I'm winning. No, I already won those votes. I already won these states. No, literally the first night of the election, Trump said, right now we're leading in Georgia, Pennsylvania, Nevada. We've already won all these states. Twitter started putting stickers over his tweet saying these aren't fact check, like saying that uh, this is fake information, you know? And I'm just, people, like the Republican Party to me, it seems like, they're so susceptible to all this false information that Trump is putting out there and they're just eating it up. Even Fox News, you go watch Fox News, they're saying things that don't even, that aren't even, you know, backed up by evidence. And it's just frustrating to me seeing this because I'm like, okay, you have news stations putting out facts, saying facts, and then they're this, they're just saying everything Trump is saying isn't true. So why do they continue to listen to him? That's my thing, you know? I just don't understand because he's saying it's partisan. Oh, Democrats are counting the votes and they're trying to steal the election. No, the Pennsylvania governor literally said Trump needs to put on his big boy pants and get out of office because if the Republicans are counting the votes, Democrats are counting the votes, independents, they don't have just one party counting the votes in all of these states. So I'm not understanding what, what the issue is. When he was winning, it wasn't a problem. Now that he's losing, all of a sudden, oh, you know, this is unconstitutional, this isn't right, this is illegal, we need to start filing lawsuits, they need to let us watch the polls. No, once these people start observing, they're going over there and wreaking havoc. Literally, they said that um, Trump supporters drove from Virginia. I'm not sure if this is like fact of by facts, I'm not gonna say, you know, it's factual or anything, but Trump supporters drove from Virginia to Philadelphia 
armed with AR rifles standing outside of the election um, ballot county places saying that they're going to shoot up the place. And I'm like, if I just feel like if the election goes on any longer and if these states don't make their decisions, it's going to be really bad for like America as a whole. Yeah, I really feel like it's definitely undemocratic. Um, and I don't think people really understand the severity of this issue because uh, under normal circumstances, you know, it is a pandemic, we would have had the results um, maybe later in the day, earlier in the morning to the next day of election day. But this is different. We're kind of going into like our third, fourth day. So, you know, I can see like how people are not understanding. So there are mail-in ballots that take weeks to show up to these um, ballot counting places. And this is what these people are counting. I feel like a lot of um, Trump's um, supporters believe that they're counting votes after the election. And that's not what's taking place. Um, he's not letting the, the process happen. Um, like Ola said, uh, you know, you don't stop the process just because you're winning. You know, you got to keep going. You got to count all the votes. They all need to be accounted for. Um, it, it's a big issue. I'm not sure, you know, why this is happening. It needs to be addressed. Um, and these allegations that are being made um, have not been backed up with evidence that I've seen, like that I've been presented with, like with the news that I've been following, you know, most of them are saying there's no evidence. Um, and certain places, especially in Michigan, and I know for a fact, um, Georgia, they tried to go to um, a judge and say, and by the way, these are Republican judges saying like, oh, like, here's some evidence. And they're like, this, this isn't enough. So the evidence isn't credible. Um, it really just seems like he's upset that he's losing. He doesn't want to come to terms with it. He's obviously not going to concede. Um, and this is definitely a threat to our democracy, for sure. He is trying to undermine our democracy, but I don't think it's a big threat, mainly because we've seen people like Georgia, like who are controlled by mostly Republicans, saying like, you know, there's not enough evidence to that there is, you know, some type of voter fraud or anything like that. And it's just, it's just funny to see because like before the election, they Republicans, well, I'm gonna say Trump, Trump encouraged his voters to go out and, and vote, like and wait in line and vote in the polls on election day. But Democrats, they, told, they um encouraged their voters to, you know, do mail-in ballots and do absentee ballots and stuff like that before you have to get in those extremely long lines and on election day. And that's what we're seeing, you know? So it's like, how can you tell your people to, how, how can you encourage your people to go on election day and, and vote on election day? And that's what they count first. And now that you see that there's absentee votes going for Democrats, you're like, oh, wait, no, there's something not like, no, you, that's, that's what you did. You, you made the bed and you got to lay on it, you know? And that's, that's all it, it is. It's just him being a sore loser. You know, I don't, yeah, it's just him being a sore loser. That's really it. But I don't think it's going to undermine our democracy. But I do think that people should like get away from the the buildings and the facilities where the people are counting the votes because you're kind of putting pressure on people who volunteer their time to make sure that every vote is counted, which is our about our democracy. One person, one vote, and that's it. That's your voice. That's your power. That's your right, and everybody should be able to vote, and it should be counted. So um, I think that this chart that they're referring to, um, it's not enough to really say that there's voter fraud because I, I would 100% acknowledge those accusations had there been evidence because this is not a partisan issue. When you're talking about voter fraud, that's an effect on all parties. That's an effect on the Americans who worked hard to get that vote. So um, I completely would you know, understand the um, anger and the frustrations of you know, voter fraud accusations, especially um, affecting the outcome, you know, affecting what president we get. Um, but like we were discussing, um, there's no hard evidence, even in doing research, a lot of it has been debunked, a lot of it has been proven to be false, and especially a lot of news outlets, like you were saying earlier, Elise, um, when we're following these news outlets, a lot of them have to say right away, hey, this is really, um, this has been fact-checked, and this is not correct. So, um, and also, the mail-in ballots that we were talking about, the absentee ballots, 
the Republicans, I don't know if they're expecting that their voters or supporters were going to do a lot of um, mail ballots. They were not going to see large numbers when those ballots were getting counted at the end. So um, it, it's not too far fetched to think that the Democratic um, voters came in large numbers in those absentee ballots. So when that spike came in at the end from those absentee ballots, it made perfect sense. It, and they were not found at three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, as some people were saying. Um, this is our process and I feel like it should be respected by all sides of the fence. Um, even if this didn't turn in our favor, which, you know, that happens, <laughs> you have to respect the process. So.